Hey everybody, so it is um, the last day of May 2022 and that means it is the end of Me Made May. And I thought I'd do a quick recording. I was going to do a blog post, but I'm finding I, re I, I prefer doing recordings lately to share my thoughts on things. Um, and I'm putting them up on YouTube, but maybe they, it should be more in a podcast format. But for now, this is what I'm doing. Plus, I like to be able to show pictures as I'm talking. So, um, so yeah, happy me, may, may, me, made, may. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you know what me, me, <laughs> wow, I can't say it. You know what it is. But just in case you don't and you've stumbled upon this, me, made, may is an online group project. I don't know how else to describe it, where every may, People who make things to wear, um, you know, people who sew and knit and do things like that, they make a pledge to wear something handmade in some way during the month. So some people may might, might pledge to wear everything handmade every day for the entire month. Some people might pledge to just wear one thing or include upcycled things or thrifted things even. Um, it's just a way to be a little bit more intentional about what we're wearing. I, and it has been around forever, and I just want to, so Zo blog, Zoe Edwards is the person who started this, I, and this has been ages. I've been in the sewing blogging world for, for over a decade. This has been going on the whole time. So, um, so you can go and follow her if you're interested in learning more. So this is the first time I've actually participated in Me Made May every day of the month. Um, I think I did it every day. There was a couple days and I'm going to get into kind of some takeaways, which is the whole point of this video is kind of the takeaways from this. So this is the first time I've done a participation almost every day or nearly every day. And definitely the first time I've taken a lot of pictures. Um, if you look through my Instagram, I have been pretty faithful in taking pictures nearly every day. There's a couple days I missed. Um, and that'll bring me to my first thing, which I actually made notes about stuff I thought I might want to mention. And this was closer to the end of the list. But one of the takeaways that I got from Me Made May is the same takeaway I've gotten every single time I've tried to do this project, which is I don't have enough everyday clothes. Um, I will say I'm way better than I used to be. When I first started sewing over a decade ago, I made a lot of, you know, vintage fit and flare party dresses. I made a lot of fun stuff, but I didn't make a lot of, you know, doing chores on the weekend kind of stuff. And I found this year there was a couple Saturdays or Sundays I was just hanging out with my husband and I did actually um, stay true to the project because my pledge was that I was going to wear one thing handmade every day and I did stay with that um, but I remember one day I just wore a pair of remade thrifted pants that I remade into bloomers with a ready to wear t-shirt so it was almost I mean I was technically doing it but not really um, so that's one big takeaway that I got and I think I have 30 pictures from the month so there's 31 days in the month and one of the pictures is actually not, um, I took two pictures on this day, this apron picture that I'm showing because um, this was like an accessory. I actually wore, I think I wore that this day, or I don't know, I wore that. I don't know, remember exactly what I wore that day, but it was one of those things. But this was more of a finished pot object um, picture. So I have 30 pictures, represents 29 days because the apron, there was two pictures that day. Uh, so I missed two days and that was two weekend days and I remember those days. So um, so I'm feeling a sense of accomplishment over that, although I'm not really sure why because I just took pictures every day. I know I, I mentioned this in a post the other day on Instagram that one of the reasons I've taken more pictures this year than I have other years is partially because of technology. It's changed so much in the last decade since I first started doing this. You know, these days, I take a picture, I have a iPhone 12 mini, and I have a little stand, the kind that you can use to like do, you know, set your phone in to talk on the a video call or to record a video on your desktop. I just set that 
on the ground and I love it because it's literally a stand that you set your phone in. It's not the tension kind. Um, so it's super easy to just pop my phone down. I literally have left this up in my walk in front of my house for a month. My husband knows to just walk around it. He made me move it. It initially was over in the grass and because uh, I like that perspective a little bit more. But he, he was worried about the landlord mowing it accidentally, so I had to move it into the path. So we've just left it in place. Makes it so easy. I just go out, I put the phone in the stand, and I am set. And I, I have an Apple Watch, so there's a remote. I can work the shutter from my phone, from my watch. And I love that, and it's made it really easy. Um, I will say, not on Instagram, but on Facebook, you can see my perspective is I shoot upwards, and that's because the phone is literally like six inches from the ground and I'm standing up on a step. So it's a different kind of perspective. And um, I know people on Facebook are bitching about it, or I probably shouldn't swear, were complaining about it on um, a post where I was, I was sharing a, a finished uh, outfit picture. And there was a couple of people who were like, I wish you would take your pictures with the camera higher up. And I was just like, whatever thanks for the art direction. I'm not changing anything. Um, cause it's easy. And I actually think this angle is cool. I like it. So anyway, that made it a lot easier to take pictures. Um, this me made May happened to coincide with me making a big shift in my wardrobe. And this gets a little bit deeper, but just for some history, a couple of years ago, it'll be two years in August. I stopped drinking and I have been a social drinker, a heavy social drinker for years, decades. I'm in my late 40s, so pretty much my whole adult life has been a little bit hampered by a little too much socializing. And I feel like in the last two years since I stopped drinking, I've had the time and probably the finances. I spent a lot of money going out because a lot of my drinking of wine was, you know, going out to see friends and whatever. So I spent a lot of money on that. And I've, I've had this, you know, extra budget and the time to really focus on kind of pulling together some stuff I've always wanted to pull together. So first I was obsessed with figuring out my curly hair. Um, I have curly hair. It's really hard to take care of. It's naturally not, um, it's naturally frizzy. So first I was super obsessed with my hair. I got super obsessed with figuring out what kind of makeup works on my face, like what I look best in and what techniques I like best. I got super obsessed with doing my nails. And part of me feels like this is all kind of connected with stopping drinking. And if you've stopped drinking or something like that, you might kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, it was some stuff I was always, always interested in, but I get distracted by going out and being hung over and all kinds of stuff. So um so I think the natural progression from clothes uh or from nail makeup and and nails hair makeup and nails is clothes, especially because clothes is a huge thing for me and always has been. So I had already been starting to work on a, a turn the hanger challenge and I don't know if I had taken many pictures I wasn't really going to document it. It was more, um, yeah, no, I didn't take a lot of pictures. Um, so turn the hanger challenge is you turn all of the hangers with the garments on them around in your closet, or you can just leave them as they are. And then as you wear things, you put the hanger back in the closet, the other direction. So you can kind of see what you're wearing and the people I know who've done this, they force themselves to once the hanger is turned, you can't wear it again. This is something people have done. I'm pretty active in the legging look in Sotina Givens community online, and that look is a lot of layers. So um, people end up with wardrobe orphans, which anybody who sews, sews ends up with wardrobe orphans, where you make something, it seems really cool, but then you never wear it because it doesn't go with your life or with anything else in your closet. And the turn and hanger challenge is kind of a way to figure out what's working, what isn't, get rid of it. So I had already kind of started that. And my closet was really full of a lot of ready to wear clothes um, because I had a lot more handmade stuff, but then a few years ago, well, four years ago, close to now, my husband and I went and lived on the road for a few years. And so I drastically reduced my wardrobe at that point, 
we settled into back into what van life people that's what we were doing living in a van um call sticks and bricks so back into a real you know brick and mortar home a couple of years ago and i started rebuilding my wardrobe mostly i rebuilt my wardrobe with torrid um sort of cute fit and flare dresses those are my favorites and they look good on me and I'm looking for one and I can't find it so um, I guess we'll just I'll just keep talking so I had I like this kind of look that was a really common you know cute cardigan cute fit and flare dress I loved my wardrobe but I really was wanting it to be handmade and I was wanting more uh, natural fibers. Uh, a lot of the Torah dresses that I had were rayon. So the, that is not a great process, but it is, I considered a natural fiber, although the processing is problematic for sure. Um, but I wanted more cotton, definitely more linen, more silk, less rayon, and I wanted more handmade stuff. So that was already in my mind. I was already doing the turn the hanger challenge. I was thinking about selling off a lot of my wardrobe, I loved my wardrobe. It was filled with a lot of colors and styles that I liked, but there was a lot of stuff that wasn't perfect. And I know a couple months ago, I had my friend Sarah over. I gave her like probably 10 dresses in one night and I, I was ready to start clearing the deck. So when I do this, um, I do it. So so that was going on. And, and here's another weird thing I was thinking about the other day. Um, I um, am kind of weird about jewelry. I love jewelry, but I wear my jewelry more like a statement piece where I wear the same thing every day. I don't switch up my jewelry. Um, I do have a gold and silver set of jewelry that I like, but I don't switch it up. And just to show you, here's a pretty good, my hands, I'm always like, oh, my hands are way too big. So I love these raw stone rings. Um, the vendor that I get a lot of my rings from is called Ring Crush. They're on Etsy. You can go check them out. I got this awesome band for my Apple Watch, which is uh, rose quartz. And it's 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 a pretty hippie kind of boho vibe. And I love this jewelry. I wear it every day. I have a moonstone pendant I wear every day. And it was oddly bugging me because I felt like my jewelry, here's one of my torrid ready to wear dresses. I felt like my jewelry was more me more like hippie cool raw kind of the vibe I like but my clothes were more pretty girls going out to brunch and I should wear more refined jewelry with my clothes I felt like my jewelry style was me but it didn't match with my clothing style and it was bugging me so that was another thing that was in my mind where I really wanted to get my wardrobe to be more reflective of me and so Me Made May came along, and there's one more piece of the puzzle that I want to mention. I've talked about a lot, a lot, a lot. But that is, at the end of April, I turned 48 on April 28th, and I got myself a color analysis. So I, um, I, I if you don't know me and you haven't known me for a while, I am aware that most people now think that I am a blonde. But... I don't see myself as a blonde. I see myself as a redhead because um, I am a redhead. I was a redhead for years. I grew up a redhead. I was teased as a redhead. I, um, I had, I'm looking for a picture of my hair. Uh, oh, there's me in high school. I, right there, make peace, but you can't really see that well. Um, I think there's albums that I can just look at. Yeah, profile pictures. Woo. So uh, my hair has really changed color in the last few years. Um, as here, this picture is from 2015, and you could see how red it is. It's possible it was colored in that. Definitely was colored in this picture. But my natural color is come here. Here's my natural color from 2012. So I went from that to um, this over the last um, few years. And actually this blonde color really has happened in the last few years, like four years maybe. So I, I spent my whole life thinking that I was uh, an autumn, if you're familiar with the seasonal color analysis. And um, 
I was really struggling. So like this orange, that's the kind of color I loved. Wore it all the time. But it really doesn't, it, like when I wear this orange color, which I thought was my color, I really struggled because of, of a few things. First, I, I felt like it made my hair look like a bat, like weird, brassy, faded, a bad dye job. I felt like it made my skin really ruddy. I felt like, um, frustrated because like I said, I had gotten kind of obsessed and took a deep dive into makeup and, and even my fingernails. And when I was wearing the colors that I thought were my colors, they really clashed with my daily lipstick that I wear. I don't like to change up my lipstick that often. Um, and my nails and I didn't like the clashing. So I was like, okay, I'll just get my colors done. And then much to my surprise, turns out I am not an autumn. I am a light summer, which is a cool palette, not a warm palette. And it's pastel. There's some pastels in this palette that I just have always been afraid of. In particular, this lemon chiffon, good gravy. And this lavender mist and oh, peach sorbet. I, I, sweet tart. I mean, those are always colors I just did not think worked for me. So, so here I was at the beginning of May. I just got my colors done. I wanted to change my wardrobe to a more natural fiber, better style, more indicative of me. And so off we went. Um, so this, this was a really good experience for me to kind of see what I had and what I was making. Cause I've, I made quite a few garments over the month. Um, and kind of see how it works. And I will say, I noticed this, this was different from a lot of other me made maze. I am totally prone to being a peacock. So other me made maze, I remember taking pictures, like putting on the outfit for the picture, like here's my handmade thing. And then maybe by the end of the day, I was like, oh, I just need to put on leggings and a t-shirt. Not that I really wear leggings and a t-shirt, but I remember changing a lot. Um, that didn't happen in any of these pictures. Like all of these pictures are ones that I got up and this is, this is how I dress. This is what I wear. I mean, I don't always have a cardigan on, but, uh, in the pictures where I do have a cardigan, I had it on cause it was cold out. Um, and I didn't change out of my clothes. Like I said, I did miss two days where I didn't take a picture cause I just didn't really love what I was wearing. Um, and this is also a day where I didn't love what I was wearing. But so obviously my wardrobe is getting better and it's getting more me and more what I like to wear because I wasn't changing out of it. So that was very cool. I also started out the month um, really struggling with this color thing. And you could see on May 1st, I actually wasn't intending on doing me, me, me made me. I just realized on May 1st that I was wearing something handmade in this picture. It's my pants. And I thought, well, why not? I, I really didn't think I had enough stuff to wear for the whole month. Um, and if I hadn't sewn, I, I probably wouldn't have. And by the end of the month, I felt like, oh, this is getting really repetitive. Um, but, but I, I thought, let's get going. And I remember this day wearing this and those pants, I've had those for like over 10 years. I made them for my mom to wear to my wedding. She, they were like the mother of the bride part of a mother of the bride outfit and um they're a rayon linen mix and I love them and I remember that day just thinking oh I'm just not into these colors and um two days later I wore this outfit which I keep trying to I don't know what to do I just made this metamorphic dress I think it's adorable but I just don't want to wear it and I need to find somebody who likes orange who will wear it so uh Throughout the month, I like I said, I did make a few things. I made this maxi dress. Oh, and here's me in that lemon yellow color, which is, is just crazy. Um, I think I made... Oh, this was new. This is a metamorphic dress. This outfit, I still... Um, that's a new ready-to-wear linen shirt that I need to remake. I like that it's linen and I like the color, but I don't like the fit. I just cannot bring myself to wear uh, unfitted that silhouette doesn't work for me. Um, this dress was new. This is another metamorphic dress. This was fun. I got into this month using Rit Color Dye or Color Remover to 
make some of the fabrics that I had and um, ready to wear garments that I had work for me. This is a dress I just bought from Torrid and it's in a style I really love, but it was in a kind of an emerald green that actually is probably on my color card, but I just felt it was too much for me. So I, I faded it and I love it. I also added those pickups in, which is really fun to give it some personality. Um, this dress is new. It's a reversible silk dress based on the Ogden cami. I love it. This apron I made to cover up all the dresses I was making. Um, this is a good mix of ready to wear on top and uh, handmade on bottom. And this is one of the garments that I color removed. It was a really uh, chartreuse green before and I got it down to more of a light yellow color. This... Um, Skirt was new, it's a tall skirt, and I love that. Uh, this shirt was new. Um, this was new, I made this just the other day. It's so cute. Uh, this is new, I am wearing this today, and I made it today. Which brings me to my next thing with me, made me. I, I remember other years kind of feeling like I was laying down the railroad ties as the train was coming in terms of making clothes to wear um, so that I'd have something to wear for the month. And in some cases, making stuff either really fast or just that I didn't love and I never really wore again. I think I don't think I'm alone in approaching Me Made May that way some years. I think that the challenge has a way of sort of pressuring you into this performance anxiety to have something new to wear uh, although maybe it's just me but I, I'd be I would be surprised if it is just me um this year there was a little bit of that um but not a lot I mean I was definitely making clothes as I was going along but that's also in the course of this month I sold off a ton of my wardrobe I sold it through a lot of my stuff, like I said, was from Torrid and there are buy sell trade groups on Torrid or on Facebook that are Torrid specific. So people go there to buy Torrid stuff. I I made like 600, 700 bucks from selling stuff from my closet. So my closet used to be really, really full. Like I couldn't fit stuff in. I literally am, I'm down to the dregs now. So I was making a lot but I was making a lot because I need to wear stuff so um so yeah I mean there was a little bit of wanting to get stuff done uh the dress I'm wearing today again is this one and I knew I wanted to wear it today and I wanted to take a picture for my last day of me made me so I kind of put the buttons on this morning when typically I sew at night so that was probably the biggest example of me um sewing doing performance sewing for me made me um but for the most part I really just wore what I had I came up with a few remixes like this is a ready to wear dress and silhouette that I do like and I still have in my closet a few of these sort of fitted on top with the midi skirt that's nice and flared and I really love this um with the lantern skirt underneath which is not something I would have done if it wasn't me made me, I just would have put on that peasant dress from Torrid. But I I put on the skirt to stick to my pledge of having my one handmade item. And I I really love that look. So I probably will continue to wear the lantern skirts with the um, ready to wear dresses. So I kind of found that from this from this year, um, this year doing me made me. So I think that my takeaways from me made me this year are kind of what they always have been, which is I need more weekend clothes. Um, for me, that means more, uh, I, where's the, um, I'm probably going to make some more. This shirt is the hinterland dress from, uh, so liberated that I made into a shirt. This one's kind of fluffy and fancy. It was based on an inspiration garment from Iwa Iwala, I Eva Iwala. I can't say that Swedish company, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, but that sort of peplum look is one that I like. I'll probably make some more of those, wear those on the weekends, just shirts and bloomers. That's the other thing. I don't really, didn't really wear a lot of bloomers this 
me made me because I didn't have any. I like this cut, but this is an old bird, a pattern that's out of um, print and I can't find it. I searched and searched and searched for it this month because I'd like to just make another more of these, but I can't find it. But I will, I do have some bloomer patterns from um, So Tina Givens. And so I probably will do those. This is So Tina Givens Greta pattern. I don't, or it's based on that. It's not exactly like it. I don't love that yoke. I think it's not super flattering. Um, so I probably won't make that. I probably will maybe play with the Planka pants, which are um, a really popular free pattern from So Tina Givens. But I definitely need more bloomers for lounging around on the weekends. I also have a stack of knit fabrics. Um, I made this Stacia dress, which is knit, using my sewing machine. But I do have a serger. I just haven't used it in like four years. And I, I, it's giant and I've been putting off taking it out. So I need to take that out because I have, um, I love this Stacia pattern. So I want to make some peplum, you know, shirt length versions of this. And then also there's a variation of the pattern where it's a t-shirt, where there's no flare, it's just straight. So I need more of those. And, um, you know, I probably would be well served if I want to be totally handmade. And I'd love to source, I do like leggings a lot. Um, I mean, I have a ton of ready to wear ones, but I was thinking of finding a pattern that really works for me for leggings and then um, sourcing some great more natural um knits i mean in may i live in virginia i probably don't want any wool or anything like that but a, a linen i have a linen rayon ready to wear sweater that i love this was another thing that i did this this year that or this month that i loved these pants that i'm wearing in this picture are you might recognize them they're linen drawstring pants that they sell at walmart and they're wide-legged and I found them at um, uh, a thrift shop for like three or four dollars and they're a linen rayon mix 50-50 so I love that blend so it's got some drape but still has the linen vibe and I remade them into bloomers so I love that I would wear the heck out of those pants and I will wear the heck out of those so I'd like more of pants like that um, the Arthur pants from So Liberated, if I make them a little shorter, might be a nice kind of loungy pants that I'd like. I need, just need more of that. Um, and just more shirts, shirts and skirts. Uh, I did find, too, that I really love this metamorphic dress, which in this picture, if you're not familiar, the blue layer and that kind of window pane in real life, it's a sort of a sea green color but it looks kind of white in this picture that's the metamorphic dress the two white layers are a different dress and the metamorphic dress is reversible so I can wear it with the green side out or the um, blue side out I think I wore it with the yeah here's the green side so I love that as a layering piece over dresses or skirts or bloomers or leggings and I, I think I'll probably make more of those but you can see in the bodice of this I probably should do some fitting with it I just don't want to because there's no darts in the bodice as is it's meant to be like a loose fitting jumper um and so I'm a little hesitant to put darts in but that's a big neckline gaping it kind of bugs me when I'm wearing it so we'll see so that was my me made May I um you know here's the pictures I'll go through them really slowly um really I dove into my um color palette my new color palette this this month I have eradicated everything um that is not in my uh color palette from my closet with the exception of a few orange things that I just haven't been able to get rid of yet I love that I am making things that are more me, which is evident by the fact that I got dressed in the morning, took my picture, and didn't 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 change. That's what I wore until I went to bed. That's kind of a change from some other years when I was doing May May May. Um and then the other thing is I really love Instagram. So it was fun to interact with people um, this year more on Instagram, and I'd like to do more of that. Uh, I myself am not awesome about going out and interacting. Um, more people came and commented on my pictures, and it was fun to talk to them, and I need to be better about going out. I do try to go through, you know, once or twice a day and be in the me made may tag and like things and comment if I really love something but I just didn't do that as much as I wanted to and I know 
um, creating community goes two ways and I was a little bit lazy. So, um, so that's that. So it's a wrap. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm probably going to keep taking outfit pictures. Probably not every day. I am, um, you know, my Instagram feed, if you go back before me, made me. I do have more real life, real life pictures sometimes and some more processed pictures, which I actually don't really like those on my feed. I like those on my stories more. But, um, but yeah, this has been fun. I'm glad I did it this year. I don't know if I'll do it next year. I might do it. I might not. We'll just see how I feel on May 1st, 2023. Thanks for listening. And if you um, like listening to uh, sewing things or watching them or whatever, uh, this with this quasi YouTube <laughs> podcast situation I have going on, um, come and follow me on Patty Brower uh, on Instagram, or you can come and find me on Facebook. Um, and just send me a friend request. It's uh, I think it's forward slash Patty Brower. So thanks and you have an awesome day. I'll see you next time.